Alright, so this is homework from two nights ago. The law of code sign on page 535. Questions do you have? Here, right? 47. Alright, page 47 on 536 says that a major league baseball diamond is actually a square, 90 feet on one side. So you know, it looks something like this, but in reality, it's a square, which means that all of these sides are congruent. And all of these angles are right angles. And the pitching rubber is located 60 and a half feet from home plate on a line joining home plate and second base. So if this is home plate and this is second base, then somewhere in between first and second base is the pitching rubber. And that, that line or the distance from home plate to the pitching rubber is 60 and a half feet. And then what we can ask you first, how far is it from the pitching rubber to first base? So here is the triangle that we're going to use to solve part A. I'll pull that triangle off the side here. And here's what we know. We know that this side is 90. We know that this side is 60.5. We're looking for uh, this side. And the only piece that we're missing is an angle. It's 45. Good. This right here is going to be 45 degrees. Because that line is going to <coughs> split this angle right in half. And if that angle, since it's a square, is a right angle, then we're going to split that 90 degrees into two congruent angles, so 45 degrees. And then from there, this is a law of cosine. Good with that setup, Ryan? Just didn't know that it split that angle in half. Uh, part B is how far is it from the pitching rubber to second base? Well, we're trying to find, we're going to use this triangle, and we're really only trying to find from the pitching rubber to second base, but I don't even need the law of sines or the law of cosines here because what kind of triangle am I dealing with? Yeah, this is a right triangle. Just remember, each base forms a right angle. This is 90 and this is 90 because those are just the uh, distances between bases. So I could just find this entire distance using the Pythagorean theorem. And once I calculate that, what am I going to have to do with x? I want to find the distance from a pitching rubber to second base. I got to subtract that 60 and a half. Okay? So that's going to be this little distance here that we want to subtract out so that we can find the distance from the pitching rubber to second base. And then C, if a pitcher faces home plate, through what angle does he need to turn? to face first base. So go back to this diagram we have in part A. You know, if he's facing first base, then what you're looking for is what is this angle that he has to turn so that he faces first base? Okay? Because the pitching rubber, the, the pitcher's mound is not directly between first and third base. It's actually a little bit in front of it. So when the pitcher turns to look at first base, it's actually going to have to turn further than 90 degrees to look there. So you're trying to find this angle. Well, once we know um, <coughs> side D, then we can set up a law of sines problem. The sine of 45 degrees over side D is equal to the sine of the angle over 90. And this angle right here. 
is across from 90. So we can uh, set it up that way. We'll know D from part A, and then we can find the angle from that. Any other questions on this homework? says a cruise ship maintains an average speed of 15 knots in going from uh, San Juan to Barbados, a distance of 600 nautical miles. Uh, you know what? Uh, I remember this problem now. And go ahead and mark this one out because this one requires you to know, you know, to be able to convert, I think, knots into nautical miles. And I don't know that. So I'm sure it says it somewhere in the, in the textbook, but don't worry about 45. Thirty-nine. I don't know. They're not, not the same. But you have to you have to look up that conversion from knots to nautical miles or something. It's like a land mile in the land, or a water mile zero. If there's Water, water, water. Hey. Very good. I would ask you to solve the triangle. And what uh, this triangle is just triangle ABC. And here's what you're told angle A is 10 degrees, uh, side A is 3. And side B is 10. So am I going to use the law of sines or the law of cosines to find the missing pieces of this? Yep. And we have an angle side ratio, so we'll do the sine of 10 degrees over 3 equals the sine of B over 10. So we cross multiply. And what do you get for the sine of B? Five seven eight. Point five seven eight. Alright, so here's where we gotta be mindful because we're using the law of sines to find a missing angle. And you know what this equation is telling us is that we're looking for the angle where the y-coordinate is positive 0.578. But there's two quadrants where an angle has positive y-coordinates. Those two quadrants are quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Okay? So in this case, we're going to have two potential answers. The calculator is only going to give us one. So we do inverse sine of 0.578. And what is that answer? So there's one answer for angle B. The other answer is in the second quadrant. If this is 35.368, so is this one. So to calculate that, I'm going to go all the way to 180 and subtract 35.368. And what do we get? 144.368. 144.632. All right, so there are the two possible answers for angle B, okay, because there's two places where the uh, B takes on positive values, first quadrant, second quadrant, and so you got to get an answer from both of them. Is this 144 going to be a valid answer? Yes. yes, because when you put it with 10, you've got something left over, okay? So you're going to get two answers for angle C. So we'll say 35.368, add it to 10, subtract that from 180, and what do you get? 
and then figure out what's left over there. 25.36. Two possible answers for C. Since there's two possible angles for C, then there's going to be two possible side values. Okay? You're going to take each of those angles for C and do a law of sines problem with each of them. Sine of 134.632 over side C, and then another law of sines, sine of 25.368 over C, and solve each of those to get side C. Two possible answers. Any other questions on this homework? <coughs> yeah, does that make a little bit more sense? Not say a word All right, let's go to the homework from last night, which was on some page. So you had some from page 541. Do you have any questions from those, or do you need any answers for those? Thirty-eight. On page five forty-one, number thirty-eight, it says, uh, "Do the following figure." And that figure looks something like this. shaded region. Uh, first off, this is a semicircle. So how do you find the area of an entire semicircle? One half pi r squared. And what's the radius for this one? For this semicircle? Uh, so pi squared is 25. So that's going to be 25 pi over 2. <laughs> That's the area of the entire semicircle. If I want the area of just the shaded region, then I've got to subtract out the area of that triangle. It helps to know that this is a right triangle. I could use Pythagorean theorem to find this third side, and it would be 6. And what is the area of a triangle? And in this case, we do have a base and a height. Okay, Herod's formula, which we learned yesterday, uh, that would be if you don't know what the height is. But in this case, because it's a right triangle, then the area of this triangle would be one half base times height, which would give us 24. And so the area of the shaded region. be the area of a semicircle minus the area of the triangle. I'll give you a Heron's formula. That's it. So we'll be leaving our answer like that. We'll be leaving our answer like that. Good, or you can multiply that out and get that sign. Law of sines, law of cosines, area of an arc, and area of, I mean, uh, length of an arc, and area of a sign. Which one? Those, like, those big G's of yeah, I mean, this is the area of a circle, pi r squared. I need to kind of know that. Yeah, and then uh, just because you should know that. Uh, 
and on it. And then half of that would be a semicircle. And then the area of triangle is one half based on something. And that's something you should look at. Any other questions on homework? Any other questions on this homework at all? On this end page? So when we calculate all that out, 
And that's going to be what we get the length of that uh, outfield fence, which ends up being about 335.1 feet. Okay? And then part B says determine the area of the warning track. So what I have shaded here in black, that's what they want us to find the area of. Well, I could find the area of the sector that includes the warning track, and then I could find the area of the sector here in blue, and I could subtract those. And so yesterday, we talked about the area of a sector, which is one half R squared theta. You're really dealing with two different sectors. You have one that includes just what's in blue, and then you have one that includes everything within the red arc. Okay? And if we can subtract those two, then we'll be left with just the area of that warning track. So what's the radius for everything inside the red? 200. And we've already found the angle, 96 degrees is really... Uh, I mean, yeah, 96 degrees really 8 pi over 15. And then what's the radius for the sector that's inside the blue? 190. Just remember that warning track is 10 feet wide. You'll find each of those areas and subtract, and then you're going to be left with that warning track in black. Yeah. 3,267.3 square feet. Those two formulas you do have to know. Any other questions on this homework? Study guide. All right. If you look at your study guide, then you'll notice that uh, on this study guide there are problems that relate to about a lot of problems for evaluating trig functions, uh, problems that relate to the unit circle, like finding coterminal angles and uh, converting from degrees to radians, and back and forth, and so on. Uh, you've got right triangle trig problems. You have law of sine and law of cosine problems. You do not have any problems that relate to Heron's formula or to uh, area of a sector or length of an arc. Okay? We did those yesterday, and you have homework problems on those. We haven't done a lot of problems with those, and there's none on the study guide. But it is on your test tomorrow. So you got to make sure you, you review all this homework that we've just gone over. Um, can we just kind of go over 5B and D? Which one? Okay. Which ones? 5B. 5B and D, okay. On number 5, you're given that the cosecant of A is less than 0, and you're given that the tangent of A is less than 0. Okay. And what you're doing is you're deciding which of the four quadrants meets both of these criteria. So start with this one. Cosec is the reciprocal of sine. In what quadrants is sine less than zero? The top. I mean, I mean the bottom. Right. Um, which quadrants is tangent less than zero? Uh, 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Which uh, one's the only one where they're both? So you're just finding the quadrants where it's less than zero. I'm confused about uh, how do you, <laughs> Olympia, you know, I don't see how it, I'm just confused. I, I don't see it. No, I know. No, it's wrong. All right, so we've memorized <laughs> all students' state calculus. So if we're looking for the quadrants where tangent's negative, it's not going to be that one. It's not going to be that one. So it's got to be the second and the fourth. Okay. So that's where tangent's negative. Then compare that to the places where sine's negative, which are third and fourth, and you're looking to see where they overlap. The only quadrant where they overlap is the fourth. Now you're just trying to find the quadrant where it takes on negative x. Any other questions on study gun? 39. 39. 
Right, so as the plane leaves the airport at 4 p.m. and heads in the direction of 10 degrees east of north, 30 minutes later, a jet leaves the same airport, flies 60 degrees west of north. So let's get a uh, picture of this. Instead of the first plane, instead of flying due north, it turned 10 degrees towards the east. And the second plane, 30 minutes later, 60 degrees west of north. And we want the distance between the two planes. So this one, you're actually given that angle between them directly. What's the angle here? 70. Okay. And of course, we're trying to find the distance between them, which is the side across from that 70 degree angle. All right. At 4 p.m., one leaves. 30 minutes later, the other one leaves. We want the distance between them at 5.30. So how long is the first plane left? We're going to fly. Hour and a half. Okay. Started at 4. We're doing this at 5.30. So that's an hour and a half traveling at 250 miles an hour. So we're going to take 250 times 1.5, and we'll get 370, folks. Yeah. And that was the one that was 10 degrees east of north. And then the other one, 30 minutes later, means it started at 4.30. So it's only been traveling for an hour at 450, 450 miles an hour, so it's just 450. And then this is a law of cosines problem. Make sure that you look over the study guide, but you got to also look over Aaron's formula and law of, I mean, the uh, arcs and sectors. That's too far, right?